Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. The Quran is an exposition on the oneness of Allah. The Prophet Muhammad said that Surat al Ikhlas is equivalent to one third of the Quran. And the first line in Ikhlas is Kulhu Allahu Ahad, say, God is one. And then it goes on <clears throat> to say that there is nothing comparable to him. There is no explaining him. He does not, he was not begotten, and he does not beget, and there is nothing like him. And he's unimaginable as far as the human mind is concerned. He's not definable in human terms. He's not definable through human consciousness. He's one, alone, unique, and in complete control of everything, all-knowing, all-encompassing. And the Quran, if you read through it, or if you listen to it, is a constant repetition of this understanding that God alone is in control and that there is no partner to him there is no second to him. And we, as the creations of this all-knowing, all-encompassing creator, have to be submissive and surrender to him and his will. So we have to understand what his will is, and what it is we are to surrender to. And his will encompasses the qualities that are Allah. He is known as the merciful one, so his will is mercy. He's known as the compassionate one, so his will is compassion. He's known as the just one, so his will is justice. So if we are to be truly faithful to our Lord and to be obedient to our Lord and to surrender to our Lord, we need to be surrendered to the closest understanding that we have of Him. And the closest understanding that we have of Him is his 3,000 gracious qualities. So we need to surrender to those qualities and we need to become those qualities. We also need to constantly understand that we came from him and we will return to him. And this is also a constant reiteration in the Quran. We came from and we return to Two. So, if we came from and we return to, we have to understand that this iteration of our existence is a temporary iteration and there is more to it after this body disappears. And we need to be conscious of that. So, we came from and we return to. We also need to understand that in the Quranic view of things, all is dependent on Allah. So, our breath is dependent on Allah. Our eyesight is dependent on Allah. Our senses are all gifts from Allah and dependent on the constant sustaining of them by Allah. 
when you put all of this into focus and you give this all thought, then you begin to realize that we individually have had very little to do or have very little to do with our creation, with our existence. We are a created being dependent on our creator. And that word dependent is very important because we need to develop a consciousness that understands that dependence. And if that is understood entirely and in truth, then there's no room for the arrogance that overwhelms most of humanity. There's no room for the egocentricity that overwhelms most of humanity. There's no room for thinking, I did this, I did that, I am in control. There's no room for that kind of thinking. And to develop a consciousness that has given up that kind of thinking is to develop a pure consciousness of true faith, of true faith in our Lord. Because as long as we believe that we are somehow in charge, that we are somehow unique and individuated without the need for our sustainer and nourisher, we have committed a violation of understanding the reality of God is one and God is great and God is everything that we see, hear, think, and do. The consciousness that walks around that has God at the forefront of itself, that has God as the penultimate of everything in our creation and being, that consciousness <clears throat> is different than the consciousness that believes it is doing. And if we come from and return to how can we return to if we have a dualistic consciousness? If we have a consciousness that includes ourselves and Allah? If we have a consciousness that includes ourselves and Allah, <clears throat> we have set up partners to Allah. Now, at the time of the Quran, the Kaaba was filled with idols made of stone or wood or various elements. And various tribes would come to Mecca and they would circumambulate the Kaaba where the God that they had created out of elemental form existed and they worshipped that elemental form as if it could do something for them. And the Quran, God's word, is constantly rebuking those who would look to created gods as if they had some sort of power and some sort of ability to help people. And it is constantly reiterating that Allah alone can intercede on your behalf. Allah alone can help you. None of these other things can do anything for you. And if you believe that they can, there will come a time when you will be thrust into a situation where you need their help and they can't hear you, they can't talk to you, they can't do anything for you. So there needed to be a very powerful shift from 
believing in idols, believing in multiple gods, to the monotheism that is expounded in the Quran. And this monotheism is a very strict monotheism. You can have nothing that separates you from your Lord. And at the finality of it all, it needs to be understand, understood that you can't have yourself separate you from your Lord. So we need to become transparent between ourselves and our Lord. We need to give up our will, our ideas, our thoughts, our desires, our needs, and make them all come into line with Allah's will and Allah's ideas for this world. And the the information that we have been given as to what Allah's ideas for this world are, are set forth in the Quran and set forth specifically within the qualities that he encompasses. So our work in this world is to understand those qualities integrate those qualities into our being and become those qualities. And in doing that, we fulfill the objective for that which we were created. Allah created man so that man could know Allah. And Allah wanted to have a creature within this existence that was his secret, that he could know, and that truly was a reflection of his grandeur. And we can be a reflection of his grandeur when we give up all of the ideas of our own grandeur and secede to the ideas of his grandeur. Secede to the understanding that he is all-encompassing, that he is all-knowing, that he is the one and the only that is not begotten and does not beget, that he stands alone, unique and perfect, within himself from before time as we understand it throughout eternity. And he has been gracious enough to his creation to give his creation the ability to enter into his qualities and understand the nature of his reality, the truth, or haq, his reality, God's truth, which is an eternal truth. So we in this world choose between making ourselves integrated into that which is eternal or integrating ourselves within the illusory temporary nature of of this existence within the world. Life comes and goes. People are born and people die. And anybody who watches this existence sees that on a regular basis. But when we become egocentric, we lose our sense of the temporary nature of this illusory existence, which exists for a while and then disappears. We believe that we are eternal. We don't see our demise. We don't contemplate our demise. 
We don't know that this is going to come to an end. And when we don't know that this is going to come to an end, we act as if it isn't going to come to an end. So we don't have reverence for what happens next. We don't have reverence for what happens after this demise. We need to be able to look at this existence as an ongoing process of which our earthly manifestation is only one part. Now, the other thing that the Quran <clears throat> continuously mentions is that if your faith is not holy with Allah, and if your belief system is outside of Allah, there is terrible punishment that's going to come after this body disappears. And that's always been difficult to explain, but one of the explanations that I find gives me some understanding is that unless you have a consciousness that is entwined with Allah, that is surrendered to his qualities, you are outside of his qualities. And if you are outside of his qualities, you are outside of the process of returning to your Lord. Because only those qualities that belong to him can return to him. So, if you don't have those qualities that can return to him, you become separated from him. And if this, when this body disappears, if you are separated from him, that is torture. That is hell. That is not being included into eternity. So, Man must have faith in Allah for his own sake, not for the sake of others. Man must integrate within the qualities of Allah for his own sake, for his own well-being. Allah doesn't need us to become like him. We need to become like him so that we can move on through this progression into the next phase of existence. And that means that we have to go through this life understanding that we are not the ones in charge, that Allah is in charge. And we have to give up the arrogance that acts as if we are in charge. Humility is an incredibly important part of true existence. Humility is an incredibly important part of faith. Without humility, we stand in our own way to finding the truth. Without humility, we become the veil that separates us from reality. So, slowly, we have to do away with the understanding that we are at the forefront of things. Allah is at the forefront of everything. And we need to integrate within him. This is the method for our salvation. This is the method for saving ourselves. And this is why the prophets came so that we could be saved, and a methodology for doing that has been set forth very clearly. And that methodology is to understand the nature of our Creator as best as is possible for mankind, and to emulate that nature within ourselves. The scriptures tell us that Allah created us in his image. 
But we all know that Allah has no image. He is without form. So what is his image? His image is his qualities, the gracious qualities of Allah. And we need to know them, understand them, and integrate them within our being. This is the work that we have to do. So when we talk about insan kamal, or true human being, what is <coughs> a true human being? A true human being is one who has integrated Allah's qualities into his being and has become a manifestation of Allah's qualities on this earth. And that's what the sheikhs are. That's what the holy men are. They are manifestations of Allah's qualities on this earth. And why are they sent? They are sent so that we can see what it's like to be that way so that we can become that way. They become a mirror for us so that we can become like them. All the great ones have said to us, become like me. This is your road to cross to crossing the ocean of illusion. This is your path to getting from here to Allah. We need to understand this and we need to make this the most important thing in our life. Yet, we have so many other desires, wishes, that we think we want to fulfill that are more important than that. We need to realize that that is the most important thing and that is what needs to be given the most effort. And if we can do that, we will accomplish that which we were sent here to become. We will accomplish the purpose of this human existence. And the purpose of this human existence is to become a true human being. And to become a true human being, we must become the qualities of Allah. And we need to establish this in our being and in our intention and in our purpose. And if we can't do that, then we become lost to reality and we create separate realities of our own. Hallucinations that we give credence to. And these are the idols in today's world. All of the things that we hold dear other than Allah are the idols in today's world. We don't need idols of stone to worship. We worship money. We worship fame. We worship power. We worship all kinds of things other than truth. And truth is Allah. So our worship has to go towards that which is real so that we can become real. Because if we don't become real, what are we? We are illusion. And we are part of the illusory world, part of the problem that has to be overcome. And then we become ones who stand in the way of those who are trying to find the truth. We need to be helpers for those who are trying to find the truth, not impediments to those who are trying to find the truth. So we have to set our intention appropriately. We have to set our actions appropriately. We have to set our consciousness appropriately to follow Allah's qualities, His truth, put Him in front of us, not behind us. Be the ones who follow Him and obey Him and are happy in that choice. May it be so for each of us. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Ya Rabbil Alameen. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.